My guest today is Barry Stahl. Barry, how are you, my friend? Excellent. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing really well. Uh, thanks for coming up, waking up early here on, uh, <laughs> since you're on the, not the West Coast, but you're in uh, Arizona. <laughs> it's a uh, beautiful 92 degrees at 7.50 a.m. So. Oh, it's going to be a hot one. <laughs> uh, what's um, what's on your mind these days, Barry? So I'm, uh, I'm interested these days in talking about the open independent web. Um, I believe that it's something that's our, our responsibility as developers and technologists uh, to promote, to make sure that we are uh, keeping the web open and independent and kind of moving us away from the corporate control. And that's not really the fact that it's corporate controlled that's the issue. It's that it's controlled by someone other than us. Okay. Uh, the, the web should be ours and our portion of the web should be ours our content should be ours to distribute as we want to uh make available as we want etc um, um okay well give me an example of uh, the parts of the web that are not open that are controlled by corporations as you said well the easiest one is uh x twitter which uh you know is kind of uh ruled by a, a capricious tech bro um tech bro, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it works for him. Does it work for everybody else? Uh, I don't know. Does it work for democracy? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not qualified to make those kind of judgments, but I am qualified to help us move to a more open, uh, you know, we the people kind of control of the, of the web. Sure. Yeah. And we've got a, a site like Twitter. I still call it Twitter. Uh, there's a there's a balance that has to be struck and people argue whether, where that balance should be. You know, should we just allow anyone to post anything they want? Hate speech, for example, threats, for example, uh, you know, descriptions of criminal activity, false accusations, libel. Uh, should, or should we restrict that? If we're restricting it, you know, how much of our at where, where, where point are we violating our First Amendment rights? By doing so. So clearly that's there's a, a balance and there's a lot of debate about what that balance is. Uh, how would an open web solve this problem? Great, great question. So uh, I think one of, one of the ways to solve that, and there, there are others, but one of the ways is to allow people to publish whatever they want and allow others to see or not see whatever they want. Okay. And so there are servers that are set up to do the same kinds of things that uh, Twitter does and, uh, you know, Facebook does and those kinds of, of services, but to do it in a way that allows content moderation to be controlled by the, at the instance level, and also more, more control at the user level. Hmm. So uh, let, let's take an example. We haven't really talked about uh, anything in specifics yet. Let's talk about Mastodon. Okay, Mastodon okay. is a Twitter equivalent. It's a microblogging service. Yep, has a social media aspect to it. Yep, and it's run on different. Everyone, you have there's lots of different instances of of Mastodon all over the world. Anyone can set one up. It's open source software. It's run on W three C based on W three C specifications, and anybody can set up an instance and make it as big or as small as they want. And it federates with other servers okay and the con the content moderation policies of the service i choose should be stated and should be kept to and if i don't like them i don't have to keep my stuff there or if they change for example i can move my stuff elsewhere and there's tools that simply allow me to move everything all my content and all my you know all my uh social graph along with it now you say move elsewhere. You mean move to another Mastodon server that's another Mastodon someone instance. else that has different right. policies and exactly uh, moderation policies. Or I can move it to my own. One of the um, one of the things I've been uh, trying to espouse for a number of years now is the concept of of posse, which is to publish on your own site and syndicate elsewhere. Hmm. So. I think the Mastodon and those kinds of tools are a good ingress into that because what you can do is you can 
start publishing pick a mastodon instance or what or wherever depending on what you're trying to do and we'll talk about what the different tools are and what they can do um say start with mastodon pick an instance it doesn't matter which one you can move around anytime eventually you might want to set up your own instance under your own domain okay well now i can set that up i can go into azure i can configure a service in fact there are um container instances already uh, available on Azure where you can set up your own um, instance. Your own uh, Mastodon instance? Your own Mastodon instance. I did not know own, that. Yep, yep, there's a, a bunch of them. Um, you know, you just spin up the containers and then uh, and you can set them up on your own domains. Uh, pretty good use of our $150 developer credit, right? Uh, For those that don't know, that's if you are uh, have MSDN, which MVPs like yourself get as part oh, of the I'm, purpose I'm, of making it. I'm not an MVP. I, Wait, don't, want, I don't want that. No. Oh, that's, a, that's your corporate MSDN. No, 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 no. Sorry. I, I I didn't mean I wouldn't. I just, I no disparagement. A lot of good friends. I would love to be able to go to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, the event. Summit. One yeah. of these, yeah, the summit. No, that, that would be amazing. But uh, I'm not going to chase it. You know, I'm not going to. Uh, well, we could talk about this offline if you're, uh, if you're close. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, the um yeah what i what i meant was i just didn't want people to, to think i was claiming something i wasn't that was Got it. yeah um yeah well you're an mvp in my book my friend thank you <laughs> the uh, so what you're talking about uh, so the 150 a month is the msdn subscription if you have one or a lot of people get them through their company then uh they, they don't realize that there's a 150 dollars of azure credit in there and you can yep. uh, use that so. to play around with or to set up something like a uh, Mastodon container instance or, or whatever you want to do. Right. Exactly. So you can, and then you can set your own domain on it. And now all your content is controlled under your domain. So you have a can canonical URL for every bit of your content and you can link to that and everything on Mastodon or everything in the Fediverse, everything on uh, the protocols that are used. And we'll talk about what those protocols are here in a minute. Uh, is all uh, referenced by URI. So everything is a first class citizen of the web, okay. um, including the entities and the activities and the uh, actors. Uh, actors, exactly. So oh, define those. I was looking at one of your slide decks. And, uh, okay. Well, you, let's talk about the, let's talk about Activity Pub. Activity Pub is a W3C spec. Okay. It, we're at version 2.0 now. So it's been around a little while. And what it does is it allows you to describe events in the context of an activity. So any activity that can be described like this user did this thing to this or these, you know, uh, entities okay. can be described this way. So the easiest thing to relate to is probably something along the lines of, well, David posted a photo of his son's birthday ga gathering. <laughs> You've been reading my social media this morning. <laughs> and happy birthday, Tim, by the way. <laughs> I looked like you had a great time. So. I did. <laughs> um, and then another event might be Barry liked that particular photo. So that's the easy, you know, that's the stuff that's out there and that just follows all the patterns that Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Right, so that, that's an actor, an entity, an, acti an activity. So I'm the actor, the entity is the birthday dinner and the activity is we had dinner to celebrate. Or the, the photo may be the, or the, the entity. Or maybe the posting of the, of the activity. Yeah. The sharing Everything. of that photo. Um, but it can be anything, right? So I work for a car company, right? Um, so it could be this field advocate put gas in this vehicle. It could be any activity. No, oh, doesn't even have to be part related to the web at all. Nope. In fact, the Open Three, uh, the W three C specification, uh, it it describes it extensively. So anything you can describe your own activity is completely within this uh, acti within activity pub. And if you need to extend it, it's an easy way to there. It's easy to extend the pro extend the protocol to anything you want. Mm -hmm. So I've been thinking a lot about how I can use this in in business operations if you have anything that is a stream of activities it might make sense to publish it in a standard format so that you can use any existing tools you know there's a lot of open source tools out there about it you know could i
publish something like that, that's the activities of the field advocates, and then display them using a Mastodon client on a big board for, for people to, to read if that's what they want to do. I don't know if that kind of thing makes sense. It's just the kinds of things I think about. Okay. All right. So um, Activity Hub is really just a standard, but people are implementing that standard somewhere, right? So Activity Pub is, a, is the, um, the protocol standard. So it defines the messages. Mm -hmm. There's also Activity Streams, and that defines the APIs. Okay. So, so we're implementing these APIs that will use that, that, that message standard or that uh, yep. format of the W3C standards. So they know how to publish, manage, distribute these kinds of messages. And who, who's creating those APIs? Who's actually implementing them? Well, anybody can create them. Um, there are, like I said, a number of tools out there that already do this kind of thing. We talked about one already. If we were to spin up a Mastodon instance on Azure, what we would be getting is basically an implementation of those APIs along with a data store to store and retrieve uh, the data from them and as needed to support that. Um, that's really what a, an instance is of these tools. Okay. Um so, yeah, so their developers are watching this. They're getting excited. They're saying, yeah, I'm going to create my own Mastodon instance. I'm mm -hmm. going to implement this standard for both the API and for the activity pub as well. Um, but there are also people out there that they're really not interested in putting the time to do that. They just want to consume. They want to take advantage of the these streams that other people have built. Where would they find them? Okay. Well, uh, it depends on what you want to do. Uh, what is your preferred method of communicating with the world? So for those of us who have been around a while and are and we're you know we're joined the social media revolution on uh, Twitter, you'd probably want to start with Mastodon. That's the microblogging uh, okay. platform. But if your uh, photo blog, like you know, like you might have done on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, there's Pixel Fed. Okay. If you have, uh, if you want to start a blog. A uh, good place to do that might be something like Write Freely. Hmm. Um, and all of these use that same protocol, publish out with the same uh, uh, same activity pub uh, messages and have the same interfaces that are implemented so that they can communicate. And I can be on uh, Mastodon and I can follow your Write F Freely blog, for example, uh, oh, okay. and see that right there in my client. So there's less of a need for us to, like, use tools that, say, publish out to every possible service that's out there. Well, we don't need that because we can subscribe to it from whatever service we're on. Ah, well, this is this is appealing to me because I do that. I have an active blog and several times a week I'll publish a blog post or a video like this one. And I will share it online in order to promote it. If I want people to know about it, read it if they want to. And so what, I don't automate anything and, and for this. I just copy and paste. I write a little thing that says uh, new blog post. Here's the title. Here's the link. And I'll just copy and paste that into Mastodon. I, push the, I paste it into Facebook and LinkedIn and other social media sites just to get the word out if somebody wants to read it. Um, and you're telling me that there's, uh, I think you're, maybe you were describing more of a poll model for this or which um, I'm trying to understand my head around. Well, all right. Let me, let me explain it this way. Uh, so my blog is right now hosted on GitHub Pages. Okay. okay. So it's all static. I use a static site generator. I use, uh, uh, so what is it, uh, GitHub, uh, acti act GitHub Actions mm -hmm. to do the publication. Well, as part of that GitHub Action, one of the things I could do, and there's a number of ways I could do this, but one of the things I could do is I could have it publish a message to my um my Mastodon account, basically, the one that already exists, and just publish that for me. So it would automate that out there. And then people on any service can see it and they can repost it or whatever themselves if they want to. Um, I could repost it again a few days later to bump it back up, those kinds of things. Um, that's, that's one way to do it. Um, you can have the blog itself have its own presence on the net and publish as itself. Barry's blog, Cognitive Inheritance, is publishing this thing. And then my Mastodon account can subscribe to it and re, re, repost it 
um, they call it boosting it. So I could boost it then, that, that kind of thing. Um, so you don't have to be fully integrated necessarily with the, with the Fediverse to be able to use it, but it's definitely a, um, a, a, there's, a there's a lot of easy integration points there. My blog is hosted on uh, GitHub pages. So one of the things I can do is as part of the uh, GitHub Actions publication process, I could put a step in there that would publish out the updates to my Mastodon, my Mastodon account, right? It could publish directly into my Mastodon account as long as I give it permission to do so. Um, I could also have my blog have its own presence. So Cognitive Inheritance, it has it, you know, as, as my blog, it has its own presence on the net and it can publish that out. I can be subscribed to it using my Mastodon account, boost that um, from, uh, from my own account. So there's a lot of ways to interact with these things that don't necessarily require having an instance or using a fully blown instance of one of the tools in order to, to use it. Okay, got it. And I heard you describe both a push model and a pull model and that, that uh, you could be pushing information from your blog using things like GitHub Actions out to something like Mastodon, or you could, Mastodon could be pulling it from your site or users on Mastodon. Yeah, users that are subscribed to a Mastodon thing can pull from that. Yep. All right. Barry, when we talked about this off camera, you were mentioning that there is a democracy component of this. This is the, I think your title of your presentation was something like how the Fediverse is going to save democracy or something like that. What, what, the, what do you mean by that? What's what's the uh, democracy aspect of this? So uh, the the title is how the Fediverse could save democracy and why it probably won't. And, uh, interesting. Let's start with the first part of that. Uh, so uh, I, I should say that the the why it probably won't is more of a warning than a prediction. So okay. we'll leave it there for now, and then we'll come back to that. Um, but yes, the Fediverse has the has the possibility of, of saving democracy in the sense that one of the big things we've seen with corporate controlled uh, social media is that they need engagement. That's how they make their money is right. to create engagement. And in order to create engagement, the thing that creates it the most is anger. So everybody gets pushed to the extremes if they're trying to create engagement. If so, if you want to be high up on the list of people who are, you know, publishing on Twitter, um, you, you need spark to outrage reversal, right? Exactly. You have to get the outrage in order to get the clicks. So there's this incentive to be extreme and there's this incentive to use it for misinformation that is in ways that will get spread quickly and easily. Yeah. Um, the Fediverse doesn't have that. There's the only algorithm is sort by, you know, date and time, right? It's okay. just a chronological um, display. You can filter that in different ways. Um, there are ways to create groups of things so you can categorize people or accounts yeah. and do different things, but there's no incentive to push to the extreme. And there's also less control in terms of what people can stop. You know, I mean, if you're um, right now on Twitter, especially, I mean, this is and this is a, a today kind of problem. I don't know that this will be a problem come next year. But right now, there is, is a real problem on Twitter with certain aspects being boosted in ways that are extreme and honestly dangerous to our democracy and other voices being silenced. Um, and we don't have to worry about that on Mastodon. And that's, of course, all on Twitter. It's all at the whim of, uh, of its owner. Um, in other cases, it's just the whims of the, um, of the algorithm. But that algorithm was, in theory, programmed by someone or at least trained by it. Okay. Um, so there are, there's no algorithms, there's no universal policies, 
Every instance can have its own moderation policies, its own content policies, et cetera, and you have the freedom to move around. So we lose a lot of that incentive. The other thing that it doesn't have right now is governmental control. So there will always be an instance for you if you want there to be, even if you have to make your own. So okay. if, you know, for some reason in uh, in certain countries they have, uh, oh God, what was it? Uh, there was a good example of this where uh, a community used a, uh, oh, an, um, a dot, I think it's AF. Um, Afghanistan, maybe? It was Af for Afghanistan. But that wasn't what they were. It, dot AF was I am this AF, right? So they, uh, oh, I don't know, as they, F the F word, right? Yes, exactly. That was the the thinking behind it. A joke, right? Yeah, um, but that that group, that particular group that had their instance there, was one of the groups that the Taliban does not allow, and they're instance was banned from that uh from that because the from taliban the... controls the government and, and and the internet in afghanistan yep so uh you know there's less concern about those kinds of things happening they still control the dns system in there so dot af is dns that's controlled by the government of afghanistan mm -hmm. but they can't control the instance okay you can just so, go into a different domain. They're just going to have to move that instance to a different place, to a different. Yeah. Uh, Dot R U. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I would avoid that one too. <laughs> perfectly honest, but yeah. So there'll always be an instance, and these things are, are really, really good to support direct action. So if you're trying to organize a community to take some form of action, a uh, really good way of doing it, especially if you're on your own server. Got it. Now, so, now, let's go back to you said that it probably won't happen. Why is that? Or are you so, I mean, your tongue in cheek? You said it probably won't. But really, you mean that it, it might not happen unless there's there's something. real risks of it not happening. Um, and, and a big part of that is just inertia. Right. It's the you know, the there's a, a law and I wish I could remember the name of it, not law um, that talks about how social graphs um their value improves exponentially by the number of people involved, okay. by the number of connections. Um, and there's not a huge number yet. There are, you know, it is these numbers while growing every day and growing significantly, um, especially every time something weird happens. So recently in the news, uh, uh, Brazil blocked Twitter. Um, you know, Elon refused to appoint a, a, a uh, a legal representative in that country and because he says i don't have to follow your laws i don't live there and they said that's fine you don't have to follow our laws but you also don't get to publish your service here yeah. if you're, right um so well let's just leave it at inertia is, is a tough one. Oh, and that's that's where where i was going with that that brought a whole new influx of people uh, into Mastodon and the Spediverse services. Oh, people that want social media that live in Brazil, they, they, they suddenly were seeking an alternative. Right. And every time something like that happens, every time Elon does something on Twitter, it brings a whole new group of people over. Uh, but it's still a last resort. People don't like to change, and for good sure. reason. It takes because out. they've oh, I, I've, I've built up this entire network of people that I'm communicating with. I am on Mastodon, but I have an order of magnitude more people on Twitter and on Facebook and on LinkedIn that I do on Mastodon. Yep. And, and you'll still there. get more engagement on Twitter than you will on Mastodon for the most part, depending on, on what it is and what community it's, uh, it, it's part of. You're, you're still going to get that. But it is up to us as technologists to make these kinds of things happen. So, you know, people who have jobs, like I, I believe you're, you're although I'm kind of making assumptions here, but I believe your job is somewhat dependent on people seeing your your work and you helping to uh, encourage people to be able to use the tools and, and do things that, they're, that they want to do. Um, others like authors, for example, they need to have a following and be able to tell their following, hey, I've got this book that's coming out. Here's where it's available. Those kinds of, of things. Nobody, nobody's going to read the book unless they're aware of the book. 
Right. So they're still going to have to have a presence everywhere people could should be. Right. What I'm encouraging is get on the Fediverse, start using that as your primary source, and then republish those in other places like on Twitter if you still need to. Um, I'm I've I've avoided Twitter for well over a year now, um, mainly because I don't feel right supporting the kinds of people that that platform is supporting right now. I see. Uh, that may change again in the future, but it'll change for me probably when Twitter starts to federate its content, and then I'll start seeing Twitter people again. Mm -hmm. um, but that, so that's a, it's a big problem to get people engaged now. There are a lot of um, a, a lot of influencers also have a presence here uh, in in the Fediverse. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're like you said, you're on the Fediverse, right? So your stuff. Yes, I, I am. I didn't know. I didn't know how to name until today. <laughs> okay. Well, that so Fediverse. In case we didn't define it, uh, stands for Federated Universe. So the okay. um, all of the social applications that publish to activity uh pub using activity streams are part of this federated universe got it so it's federated rather than consolidated it's not uh, it's a, the, the loose connection the distributed uh connection of all these sources is what defines it, it just distinguishes it from something platform. like twitter yes exactly so there's no central control of it so they yeah. can't you know one person Jeez. can't turn you off right um there's other other reasons that it probably won't change things is that because it's open source and it's not supported by corporations, it's effectively a hobby for many of the developers. Yeah. Um, so there's, I mean, there's a, a tremendous amount of activity. There's a lot of support. There's a lot of individuals providing support in a lot of different ways. And I have some recommendations for how you can be a part of that, you being the listeners. Um, but there isn't a strong financial incentive like there is for uh, social commercial social media. So. Nobody's making money by running a Fediverse instance or building a Fediverse product, as far as I know yet. Although there may be some, you know, like uh, the the client tools. Anybody can build a client tool, just like in the old days with Twitter. Anybody can build anything on the Fediverse APIs. Mm -hmm. So. Remember how amazing things were when when Twitter had an open API and we could all build yeah. inst interesting things against it. And that's what yeah. created that ecosystem. Yeah. And then they shut it down because they wanted to monetize that. Mm. We still have that in the Fediverse and we can make amazing things with that. And that's I want I want developers to look at that and say, how can I make amazing things with that? I, I had a, a, an idea. Uh, uh, I, I've actually wrote down several ideas, uh, but one of the things that I, I, an interesting idea, and I'm kind of going off on a sidebar here, but I'll come back to the why it probably won't in a minute. Um, there's been a lot of, a lot of people talk about radiating intent. So there's, I don't know what the original source of it was. I know uh, people like Simon Sinek have uh, talked about it, where rather than asking forgiveness instead of permission instead of that kind of thing you just publish out here's what i'm working on here's what i'm doing here's the kinds of things i'm trying to accomplish and that's good for both leadership and um individually contributing to things because you're telling people and other people may have ideas other people may already know why that's a bad idea and can give you suggestions or help you avoid pitfalls um I actually keep that up on my whiteboard right here next to my desk all the time um, that says radiate intent, that my goal is to try and make sure everybody knows what I'm working on at all times so they can um, give me insights or, um, and I don't have to ever ask forgiveness, right? Um, I could use, if I had the right tools, I could use the Fediverse as an intent radiator one of the ways, of course, is to simply microblog about everything I'm doing, but not everything can necessarily be public. So there may be other ways that I could bring, like I could maybe make a bot that I can use to uh, radiate my intent that uses uh, activity streams and publishes it in a more private way. Or 
uh, integrates that with some tooling that we use at the office that lets my coworkers know what I'm doing, but doesn't um, necessarily publish it publicly. Lots of different options for tools when you have a protocol like that and a, and an a, a set of APIs that are that interesting and that useful, that flexible, you know? Uh, but we need to do it. We need to make these things happen. So start thinking about how you can contribute, how you can uh, help build the open source software, or maybe uh, review code check-ins or comment on code or um, help with the documentation or help with content moderation or just contribute financially to an instance or something like that or to a project. Um, there was a very interesting uh, paper published recently, last it was last month, um, that was a, a governance report that was supported by a, a group called the Digital Infrastructure Insights Fund. So it's a, a group that looks for um, projects they could support uh, dealing with digital infrastructure and, and getting ideas out of it. And they used the Fediverse as a uh, foundation to try and figure out what um, governance policies are working really well and why. So we can try and replicate those kinds of things. A very, very interesting report. Um, and there's lots of other studies and examples that could be done using the open data that we have available. Um, so I'd like to see those kind of things happen. I love that we're finishing on a call to action. We're at time, Barry. I've learned so much today. Thank you so much. Technology is our tool. Let's use it to build and protect an open, independent web for all our friends and family.